Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Morse. I'm the medical director for District Health Department Number 10, Mid Michigan District Health Department, and Central Michigan District Health Department. Um, I illustrated where those health departments are over here so you know where I work. Um, today, we're going to talk a bit about um, COVID 19 vaccines, how they have been researched, developed, and their safety monitoring. So, how do new vaccines get approved for use in general and in terms of a vaccine like this that's needed for a pandemic? Um, not shown on this illustration, first vaccines start out in a scientist's mind. They think about it, they work on it in a laboratory, they study it in animals that are similar to humans in their physiology to see if this is gonna work. Is it gonna cause an immune response that's gonna help us to fight off infections? Um, then these phases happen. They happen the same whether or not we're looking at a long-term study um, for basically like your normal vaccine or if it's going to be um, compressed a bit for a pandemic where we need it really quickly. So these same phases are the same. They are not compromised. They're not um, going to have any corners cut, anything like this. So the first phase they gather a smaller number of, of human volunteers um, to see, again, this is after they've already studied it in animals to, to see these things first, but does it appear the vaccine is safe? Does it appear that it causes some kind of an immune response so that our body's gonna be able to fight off a natural infection later on? Are there any major serious side effects? And then they also use different doses of the vaccine, different timing to get an idea of what's going to work best. Then there's phase two. Um, sometimes you'll see phase one slash two or phase two slash three. Um, what they're doing there is they're kind of combining one phase with the next. So they might start some people in phase one and then follow them through to phase two. So these may not be separate independent things. So it might not be one starts and stops and then the next starts and stops. So that's what that means. So phase two, they look at more people. Um, they look at those same things they would look at in phase one, but just in more people. And they start narrowing down dosing and um, you know how many shots they'll give, what timing they'll give, because they've learned some of that in phase one. Um, they also do a bit more studying on the immune response. Uh, so they get a better idea of, is this going to work? Is it worth going on to phase three? Um, you know, a lot of vaccines don't make it past phase one, then some don't make it past phase two. The ones that are looking promising go on to phase three. And that's where they get um, thousands, um, tens of thousands of, volunteer, of volunteers. Um, and that is not compromised, uh, whether it's a normal vaccine um, or one of the pandemic vaccines, <clears throat> there's a minimum number of people that have to be studied for this. It, it can't be compromised. Um, so again, they have narrowed down what dosage, what timing they're going to give, and they give it to a whole bunch of people really in the normal environment. So it's not really a test subject, or sorry, really not um, an experimental setting. It's in the real world. Um, they give the vaccine as it would be given in the real world and then see if it's gonna work in the real world. So in this situation, they give it to people in different countries, different areas and see, you know, do they get COVID or do they not get COVID? And then what kind of side effects um, or complications might occur. Um, then if it is effective enough and if it is safe enough, um, then it goes to the FDA. The FDA uh, committee is made up of non-governmental people. So it's people that are experts in immunology and infectious disease. They work mainly for like medical schools um, and other areas uh, in clinical and um, medical expertise. Again, not government employees. They're just experts in their field and they review all of this information as it's developing really, but then as it's all pulled together and decide, do the benefits outweigh the risks? And with the COVID vaccine, they really had set some benchmarks saying it has to be at least 50% effective. Um, with vaccines, they're pretty picky because we're giving it to people that are already healthy. Um, whereas with medications, we're giving it to people that are sick and there may be a little more um, willingness to take on a little bit more risk when someone's already sick. So once it's been approved, and again, in this situation, it's not 
fully FDA approved, it is given what's called an emergency use authorization, which means that it hasn't had as long of a time of study and a long, as long of a time of evaluation of the side effects, um, but we need it right away because this is an emergency. Um, so it's given that stamp of approval with the requirements that studies continue and they continue to monitor for any complications or side effects. Um, the company makes these in batches um, in lots. So when you buy any other product, um, they'll have lot numbers. Vaccines are the same way. And this has been, this is how it always is. Every vaccine um, lot has to be tested. So they'll take out a random sample from every single lot. It has to be evaluated, um, checked for potency, and then the FDA has to review that information before that lot can be shipped and used. So there's continuous evaluation and testing. Um, and then the FDA, just like with any other drug company, um, cosmetic factory, any kind of factory, they're uh, regularly inspecting those companies to make sure that they're meeting the standards. So a good deal of the vaccine is actually being produced in the Pfizer factory in Portage, Michigan, just south of Kalamazoo. So um, go Michigan, it's a, a great thing. Um, so just to look at the difference in timelines between kind of the normal development and then the development with the pandemic vaccine. Um, again, you'll notice the same exact steps are in both of them. It's just compressed. So with a normal vaccine, um, and by normal, you know, I'd mean like a new flu vaccine or um, the new Shingrix or shingles vaccine um, or a new pneumonia vaccine, anything like that. Um, they work on it for several years in a lab because they might start one, it might not work that well, they might have to start over. That preclinical, or I'm sorry, the phase one clinical phase where they just study a few people might take several years because um, they take their time, they try multiple different dosing strategies and they follow them for quite a long time before moving on to the next phase, which is where they look at more people with those narrowed down dosing schedules. And then they go to phase three which is the 30 to 40,000 people, and they follow them for a very long time. So they wanna see, you know, does that immunity last for years rather than now we've only really followed people for a couple of months. Um, but again, typically it's not an emergency. And so they have the time to really follow it um, so that it's kind of one and done rather than having to go back and make changes later. Then the approval process might take quite a long time because um, there's not a big rush and they just take their time approving it. And then they continue to evaluate the safety after it's marketed because, you know, seeing how it works in 40,000 people is different than seeing how it works in 40 million people. Um, the post-marketing surveillance is essentially the same as what will happen with this vaccine. Um, I'll just move myself. Um, so with this new vaccine, again, it's the exact same process. It's just been squished to meet a shorter time frame because we really don't have 15 years to wait. Um, we wanted to get this going because we have people that are dying. We want to get back to a normal lifestyle. Um, so a lot of the additional evaluation of efficacy and safety um, will be happening after it's hit the full market. So. Sorry, I don't wanna make you seasick. Okay, so this slide actually came right out of the Pfizer information to the FDA. So just so you can see, this is the timeline that Pfizer followed. Um, Moderna has not at this time of recording has not taken their information to the FDA that happens this coming week. Um, so that is not available to me, but just so you can see, it really does follow that same timeline as this study or this article on um, pandemic or emergency use authorization shows. Um, I, I will talk about our mRNA vaccinations in a, another video, um, but mRNA vaccines have actually been studied for about 30 years and there are some for um, universal flu vaccination that are in phase three trials. So that technology has been really well known and um, ready to go. So once they had the, the sequence for SARS, 
um, they were able to really quickly use it. That's why it really was such a quick process, thank goodness. Um, and again, there were not corners cut, they were just compressed. So what is Operation Warp Speed? So you hear that and you think, gosh, does that mean things were rushed? So Operation Warp Speed did not have anything to do with how the vaccines were studied. Um, nothing was eliminated from the process of studying the vaccine or any safety, anything like that. But it basically took steps to make sure that once that vaccine was approved and had been evaluated by the FDA and the CDC, it was in people's hands. So there was a financial risk to this that was really the main risk. Um, as Pfizer and Moderna vaccines started to look really promising, um, the federal government said, we're gonna give those companies money to start manufacturing it and getting ready to ship it, knowing that what if at the last moment something comes up about safety and we have to scrap it all? So we could lose millions of dollars in having paid to have these vaccines produced and get ready to ship them. But on the flip side, we had these vaccines approved just within the last few days of the time of making this recording, and it's already being shipped now. Millions and millions of doses are ready to go because of Operation Warp Speed. So that was the point of it, was basically um, collaborating with everybody that needs to be collaborated with so that the, the steps that usually go in a linear, linear process are happening all at the same time. Again, the main risk was loss of time and money, but the big gain was that we were ready to start vaccinating basically the moment things were finally approved. So it's not a corner cutter, it's just an accelerant <laughs> to get things in the hands of people that need it. All right. So do we know it's safe? Um, I will talk in some other slideshows about the specific vaccines, but how can we make sure it's safe? The studies were really pretty small when you look at, you know, again, 40,000 versus 40 million. And that's the same for any vaccine. Plus, we've only watched the studies for um, a couple of months. Most vaccines, if you look at side effects in general, will usually be apparent within the first weeks and at the most within the first, sorry, within the first week and at most within the first six weeks. Um, but with all vaccines, we have numerous ways of watching for side effects. So one new one with COVID is V-safe, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But this is basically how we watch every vaccine after it hits the ground running. There are numerous things happening in the background watching for vaccine safety. There have been vaccines that have been taken off the market because there has been concern. Um, a lot of time it's very, it's not concrete if the side effects are definitely from the vaccine, but out of an abundance of caution, we'll have vaccines taken off the market. One example was there was a Lyme uh, infection a vaccine, and there seemed to be a slight increase in arthritis in people that got it, so it was taken off the market, and that was picked up by things like the, the VIRS program. The first rotavirus vaccine, um, there were children, some children who had intussusception, which is a bowel condition after getting it, and that was picked up by VIRS and that was taken off the market. Again, intussusception is a condition that tends to happen in infants and it could have been a coincidence, but because we don't wanna take any chances, that was taken off the market. So um, again, vaccine safety is extremely important because we're giving healthy people something and we don't want to cause a problem. So um, I will go through these things um, in detail. I don't want to spend too much time on it. It is available on the CDC website, but just to give you an idea of how much work goes into this with a normal vaccine, but also especially with the COVID vaccine. So again, the V-Safe program, it's a smartphone-based program that um, people will be encouraged to sign up for, especially like our healthcare workers who will be the first ones getting it. And those who sign up will be actively monitored after they get their vaccine. And it will also help remind them of their second dose. Um, the National Health Care System Network will help to monitor long-term care facilities um, for any adverse event. And they're one of the first groups getting vaccinated as well. Um, 
large insurance companies um, will help monitor for any claims that might indicate adverse events. Um, things that have already existed and have always been a part of monitoring for vaccine safety. One is VIRS, the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System. Anyone can report into this, whether it's a healthcare professional, um, the general public, and this collects any suspected adverse event from a vaccine. Um, and then those are regularly monitored. And then later on here, we discuss that there are then um, collaborating healthcare organizations and physicians that help evaluate those reports to determine, you know, was it a coincidence? Um, you know, if someone got a vaccine and then they a week later passed out and broke a hip, you know, was that a coincidence or was it a cause and effect? And that is a bit challenging, but, you know, if it happens once versus it happens a hundred times, you know, that kind of data is really closely analyzed. The vaccine safety data link. Um, there's different healthcare organizations that really actively survey for evidence or any signs of vaccine um, issues. And then again, they're the ones that help to evaluate that VIRS information um, to see what scientifically is significant versus um, kind of background noise. Um, the CISA project um, works with research centers to help do actual research on vaccine safety. Medicare looks at their claims. Um, so to see if people are seeing a healthcare provider for potential adverse events from a vaccine. Um, the BEST system, um, let me move over here, sorry. Um, the BEST system um, also looks at healthcare claims and you know visits to healthcare providers to see if someone happened to go in after a vaccine um, for an adverse event. Um, the, the Sentinel Initiative is another one where they're so they're actively searching. So let's say a healthcare provider might not enter in to VIRS that someone went in to be seen for um, you know persistent arm pain after a vaccine there are programs that are actively searching for that kind of information. So the Department of Defense, um, you know, the military gives vaccines to their members um, quite aggressively. And so they have their own version of VIRS. Um, they have their own version of um, monitoring for their clinical systems uh, for adverse events um, and their own systems for checking their electronic records as well. And then the VA system has their own system of searching for adverse events um, for both drugs and immunizations um, and checking medical records. So that's the same way of doing that, but just throughout the, the defense system and the veterans. And then the Indian Health Services, which are separate health systems for our Native Americans, um, also has their own VIR system. So those are all ways that in the past and currently vaccines are actively um, and aggressively monitored for safety uh, after they hit the mainstream. So um, vaccine safety is extremely important to us in healthcare. So that is a very quick overview of how vaccines are studied, how pandemic vaccines have been a little bit different just in how they've been more quickly um, evaluated to go to market, but not having any corners cut. Um, there are two different locations on the CDC where you can find a lot more information. One is on their vaccine site and one is on their COVID site and then michigan.gov has a COVID vaccine site as well. And also, if you have any further questions or concerns, you can follow up with your local health department. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye.